Welcome to Central Presbyterian Church's online worship service for this Sunday, September 20th, 2020. I'm Relay Reader Zach Cosner. Um, I invite you to download the bulletin for today's service, which can be found at the link underneath this video on Facebook and on YouTube, or you can head to our website, www.centralpresspb.com, click on the publications link, scroll down to you see today's date, uh, click on that link and you will download the PDF of today's bulletin. Feel free to print it so you, it will help you uh, follow along with today's worship service. Now that you have access to today's bulletin, I ask that you turn your attention to the announcements found on the back of the bulletin. Ferncliff is now offering Advent in a Box for those who might be limited in their mobility during this pandemic uh, in the coming Advent season. It provides four sessions of activities and supplies, one for each week of Advent. Check out their website, www.ferncliff.org for more information if you're interested. Archives of our online services can be found on Facebook and on YouTube. Uh, links to each are on our website, www.centralprespb.com. That's also where you can find our online giving portal. Look for the Donate Now link on the top of the webpage. Uh, we take credit cards, debit cards, and checks, and you can also set up recurring donations on a weekly, bi-weekly, or monthly basis. Uh, let us now prepare our hearts and minds to worship the Lord. Give thanks to God who spreads a cloud for a covering and gave fire to the light of the night. Who opened the rock and water, gushed forth and flowed through the desert sands. Seek the Lord and the strength only God can give, a presence that continually abides. We will remember the wonderful works God has done, the miracles and the judgments God made. Let us worship God. For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Please join me in today's call to confession that can be found in your bulletin. We will say it together and then silent, uh, and then pray silently. Let us pray. Loving God, you know our weaknesses. Fearful of the future, we forget what you have done for us in the past. We see scarcity where you supply abundance. We complain when conditions challenge us. We begrudge others. Their success allow, uh, allows envy to divide us and live lives that are unworthy of the gospel. Generous God, forgive us. Help us to remember your wonderful works, trust your gracious provisions, seek out your presence, and strive side by side with others to serve you well. And now silently, Amen. As people born of the water and the Spirit, we have died to the old life and a new life has begun. God's grace is poured out upon us day by day. Come to the water and remember your baptism. Be thankful and live as one who has been raised to new life. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Amen. Now it is time for our... Um, uh, for the young and young at heart uh, to listen to today's um, children's message from Miss Rose Von Tunglin. Everyone, I hope you've all had a good week. Today I want to talk about food. How many of you have your favorite food? Do you have a favorite food that you like? What if when you opened your front door in the morning there it was outside just for you to go pick and eat as much as you want. Well, that's kind of what happened back in Moses' time. See, Moses had gone, with God's help, had gone and freed the Israelites from the Pharaoh in Egypt. And they had gathered all their things and started out on a journey to the Promised Land. And along the way, they started running low on food. So they started complaining to Moses. Why did you bring us out here to starve? At least in Egypt, we had food to eat. Well, God heard their complaining. And so what he did was in the, in the, after, in the morning, he sent out manna. He put bread out, kind of like a bread in the morning. And in the afternoon, he sent birds or quails for them to eat for meat. So then they, they, 
they did okay. They were happy then. But you know, that kind of reminds me, sometimes we like to grumble and complain about things too. But we need to remember that God always provides for us because he loves us. Just like he did the Israelites. He provided food for them when they were out in the wilderness. So the next time you come, you grumble again, the next time you complain or grumble, remember, God loves you. Let us pray. Dear God, we thank you that you love us, that you provide for us the things that we need. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Ms. Rose, for that wonderful um, children's sermon. And now we're going to go ahead and turn it over to uh, Reverend Tim Rees for today's uh, sermon. I wouldn't have it any other way. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. I'm glad that you are able to join us as we worship God this morning. Let us prepare our hearts and minds to approach God through God's Word. Our first reading this morning comes from the 16th chapter of the book of Exodus, beginning with the second verse and proceeding through verse 15. Let us listen for the word of the Lord. The whole congregation of the Israelites complained against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. The Israelites said to them, if only we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt when we sat by the flesh pots and ate our fill of bread. For you have brought us out into this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. Then the Lord said to Moses, I am going to rain bread from heaven for you, and each day the people shall go out and gather enough for that day. In that way, I will test them whether they will follow my instruction or not. On the sixth day, when they prepare what they bring in, it will be twice as much as they gather on other days. So Moses and Aaron said to all the Israelites, In the evening you shall know that it was the Lord who brought you out of the land of Egypt. And in the morning you shall see the glory of the Lord, because he has heard your complaining against the Lord. For what are we that you complain against us? And Moses said, when the Lord gives you meat to eat in the evening and your fill of bread in the morning because the Lord has heard the complaining that you utter against him, what are we? Your complaining is not against us, but against the Lord. Then Moses said to Aaron, Say to the whole congregation of the Israelites, Draw near to the Lord, for he has heard your complaining. And as Aaron spoke to the whole congregation of the Israelites, they looked toward the wilderness, and the glory of the Lord appeared in the cloud. The Lord spoke to Moses and said, I have heard the complaining of the Israelites. Say to them, At twilight you shall eat meat, and in the morning you shall have your fill of bread. Then you shall know that I am the Lord your God. In the evening quails came upon the and covered, came up and covered the camp, and in the morning there was a layer of dew around the camp. When the layer of dew lifted, there on the surface of the wilderness was a fine flaky substance, as fine as frost on the ground. When the Israelites saw it, they said to one another, What is it? For they did not know what it was. Moses said to them, It is the bread that the Lord has given you to eat. Our second reading comes from the 20th chapter of the Gospel according to Matthew, beginning with the first verse and proceeding through verse 16. Again, let us listen for the word of the Lord. For the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire laborers for his vineyard. After agreeing with the laborers for the usual daily wage, he sent them into his vineyard. When he went out about nine o'clock, he saw others standing idle in the marketplace, and he said to them, You also go into the vineyard, and I will pay you whatever is right. So they went. When he went out again about noon and about three o'clock, he did the same, and about five o'clock, he went out and found others standing around and said to them, Why are you standing here idle all day? 
they said to him, because no one has hired us. He said to them, you also go into the vineyard. When evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his manager, call the laborers and give them their pay, beginning with the last and then going to the first. When those hired about five o'clock came, each of them received the usual daily wage. Now, when the first received the usual daily wage, or now when the first came, each of them thought they would receive more, but each of them also received the daily wage. And when they received it, they grumbled against the landowner saying, <clears throat> <clears throat> sorry, saying, these last worked only one hour and you have made them equal to us who have borne the burden of the day and the scorching heat. But he replied to one of them, friend, I am doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me for the usual daily wage? Take what belongs to you and go. I choose to give this last the same as I give to you. Am I not allowed to do what I choose with what belongs to me? Or are you envious because I am generous? So the last will be first, and the first will be last. Let us, or this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Open now our hearts and minds, O God, by the power and presence of your Holy Spirit, so that as your word is proclaimed this day, we may hear with joy what it is you would have us hear. That hearing we might believe. That believing we might re re live lives of richer and fuller service, glorifying you here on earth as you are glorified in heaven. Amen. As a species, we human beings spend a great deal of our time considering what is fair and what is not fair. It isn't fair that professional athletes are paid millions of dollars while teachers continue to be underpaid and underappreciated. It isn't fair that someone can work hard all of his or her life only to find that the pension that he or she was counting on in retirement has been gutted because of corporate greed and malfeasance. It isn't fair that there are people who will always find ways to exploit people's misfortunes and generosity for their own ends. It isn't fair that prosperity trickles down, to borrow terminology from President Ronald Reagan, while all the misery of failed economic policies wash over us in a deluge more akin to Niagara Falls. It isn't fair. That is the cry which is raised whenever we feel we have not received what we have coming to us or whenever someone else does not receive what we think they should have coming to them. And it's not a new phenomenon. In our reading from Exodus this morning, the people of Israel complained that life is not treating them fairly. They experience hardship in the wilderness and suddenly, Every bad memory of Egypt is forgotten. All they can see is that their expectations of what life should be like are not being met. And so they complain, if only we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt, when we sat by the flesh pots and ate our fill of bread. For you have brought us out to the wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. In that complaint, they are saying, we deserve better, and it isn't fair that you have treated us this way. But God proves to be gracious by providing manna and quail for the people to eat. And what 
really struck me as I studied this passage this week were those last three verses. This is what the Lord has commanded. Gather as much of it as each of you needs, and omer to a person according to the number of persons, all providing for those in their own tents. The Israelites did so, some gathering more, some gathering less. But when they would go and measure each amount by an omer, those who had gathered more had nothing left over. And those who gathered little had no shortage. They gathered as much as each of them needed. Now the text does not say, but I wonder if those who gathered more than their fair share complained about being treated unfairly when they found they had nothing more than the prescribed amount. At any rate, I like that image of everyone's needs being met. In the eyes of God, social status, one's personal power or wealth, one's gender, one's age, none of this entered into the equation. Each and every person was provided the same amount according to their needs. And that's the message of our gospel lesson as well. At the end of chapter 19 in Matthew's gospel, Jesus reminded his disciples that the kingdom of heaven is radically different than the way things are in the world. In our prevailing culture, to the victor go the spoils, and might makes right. But in the kingdom of heaven, many who are first will be last. And the last will be first. In God's kingdom, the world's values are turned upside down and inside out because they have been skewed from the very beginning. Here I'm thinking of the shepherd that Jesus extolled, the one who risked leaving 99 sheep in the wilderness to, in order to look for the one that was lost, or the woman who took a jar of perfume and used it to anoint Jesus' feet. I'm thinking of a widow who was praised by Jesus for giving all that she had, two small copper coins, an offering in his and God's eyes, which was far greater than any extravagant gift those who were wealthier had provided. And then, in this morning's lesson, there was a landowner, who we are told kept hiring people throughout the day to go and work in his vineyard. Some arrived at work just as day was dawning. Others came mid-morning, others at midday, others in the afternoon, and some just an hour before quitting time. Now, we should note that this parable is not meant to be a lesson in corporate economics. Nor is it even an example of how Christian employers are to treat their employees. Because I guarantee you any company that paid employees hired in December the same salary as those who worked a full 12 months would soon have trouble finding anyone to work January through November. Nor is the purpose of this parable to provide a practical guide for how one should manage a vineyard. Instead, the aim of this parable is to be monumentally impractical, to fracture so thoroughly our worldly expectations and our customary patterns of practicality that we are forced to think anew about ourselves, other people, and God. Perhaps what is most intriguing about this parable is that the landowner throughout is always more concerned about the laborers than the crop or his profits. We might expect the story to say that more and more workers kept being hired because there was more work than the workers could handle. 
but Jesus doesn't tell us that. Instead, Jesus simply tells us that the landowner hired more workers because he found them standing around out of work. In other words, the landowner is motivated more by their need for work, their need to provide for themselves, than his need for workers. And especially poignant is the conversation that the landowner has with those workers whom he hires at five o'clock in the evening. And he asks them, why are you standing here idle all day? To which they respond, because no one has hired us. The landowner hires even those that everyone else seemed to have ignored or forgotten or for whatever reason just didn't want. And the shock of the parable comes at the end of the day when the landowner gives all the workers exactly the same wage. Everybody gets a full day's wage, a denarius. They get enough to provide for life for a day. And those who worked all day cry foul. That is not fair. But the landowner reminds them that they got what they bargained for. That was the agreement. Friend, I am doing you no wrong, he says. Did you not agree with me for the usual daily wage? There's a stark contrast between those workers hired first and those hired last. One commentator puts it this way, the last hour crew, those who have waited in vain throughout the day for a call, those who are desperate and needy and who know it, those who realize that they would stand idle and useless all day were it not for the benevolence of the landowner, those who in relief and joy and trust respond to the, the command of the landowner to go are given sheer grace, a day's wage. But the first hour workers, even though they don't recognize it, are also given grace, a day's wage, the ability to sustain life for them and their families. But grace is not their framework. They think that life works according to deals and negotiations. They strike bargains. They count up good deeds. They check their time cards. They divvy out their devotion with measuring spoons. Their vocabulary is filled with cries of, I deserve, and where's mine, and it's my God-given right. And the contrast could not be greater. Those who make bargains are working for a denarius. Those who come at the end of the day are working for the landowner, for God. And both get exactly what they are working for. In the ordinary sense, all the workers get a denarius, but we must remember that this is a parable about the kingdom of heaven. And so we are called to think beyond the ordinary. So what would be considered a daily wage in the kingdom of heaven? That question sends us back to a question that Peter asked Jesus in chapter 19 of Matthew. There, he points out that the disciples have left everything to follow Jesus, and he asks, what then will we have? Jesus replies that they will be enthroned in heaven to sit as judges over the 12 tribes of Israel. Then he says, and... Everyone who has left houses or brothers or sisters or father or mother or children or fields for my name's sake will receive a hundredfold and will inherit eternal life. In other words, what our Lord promises is that at the end of the day, everyone who has been called into God's vineyard will be lavished with the daily wage of heaven, the very presence of God and all of God's treasure. That goes for those who came early and those who come late. 
And lest we protest just how unfair that seems, we should keep in mind two very important truths. First, we all are undeserving of such generosity. And second, though we like to think of ourselves as those laborers who have worked all day, or those laborers who do everything in the church and never ever see anyone else lifting a finger to help, are not the first comers in the vineyard. We are all late comers. There exists a great cloud of witnesses on whose shoulders we stand, who came before us and endured suffering and persecution and hardship on account of the gospel that we in this free land cannot even imagine. So really, it's a matter of putting things in the proper perspective. The good news is that everybody in the parable is given the wealth of the kingdom. God gives everyone a wage so extravagant that no one could ever spend it all. And we are reminded that the landowner is free to do what he will with what he owns. And he uses this freedom to be gracious and generous. The 24th Psalm reminds us that the earth is the Lord's and all that is in it, the world and those who live in it. And God chooses to be gracious and generous to everyone and everything that belongs to God. To the leper, to the lame, to the Gentile, to the last, the lost, the least, the left out, the left behind, the unwanted, the illegal alien, the stranger in our midst. God chooses to be merciful to us all. Which begs the question, what do we really think about a God whose basic character is love? and mercy, and forgiveness. Truth be told, when it's shown toward us, we like it just fine, don't we? But the real test comes when God is merciful to people we don't think deserve such mercy. When we look in our pay envelopes and find that we receive the same measure of mercy as those who, in our opinion, have arrived too late and with too little, then our response is likely to be, that's not fair. But as a latecomer who recognizes just how much we all depend on God to provide for our needs, my heart cries out, I wouldn't have it any other way. And thankfully, neither would our God. To God be all the honor, glory, and praise forever. Amen. I would ask now at this time that you would please join me and confirm what it is we believe using the words of the Apostles' Creed that can be found in your bulletin. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us now return to God our thanksgiving through our tithes and our offerings, which will be taking a, taken again this week electronically 
uh, using our uh, the uh, donate now link on our website www.centralpresspb.com. Um, if you uh, are unable to use that link, we invite you to uh, mail checks or money orders to the church. The address is 6300 Trinity Drive, Pine Bluff, Arkansas, 71603. It is right and our greatest joy to give you thanks, eternal God, for all the blessings that you have bestowed upon us. But we are most grateful for the gift of your Son, Jesus Christ, and your abiding and sustaining Holy Spirit. For our Lord reconciled us to you and to one another, opening the door to eternal life. Your Holy Spirit continues to confront us, convict us, correct us, and equip us to enter the world and share the good news of your redeeming grace. So, and so, O oh God, we offer up our time, our talents, our treasures, and indeed our very selves for you to use as you see fit. Until that most glorious day when at the name of Jesus, every knee in heaven and on earth and under the earth shall bend and every tongue shall confess him, Lord, to your honor and glory. Amen. At this time, let us share our joys and concerns, uh, which there are a few. Um, I will start out by saying that um, I'm going to have a, an unspoken prayer request um, for a family member of mine. Um, uh, we continue to pray for um, uh, um, Justine Anton, I should mention. Um, she, her daughter was diagnosed as COVID uh, positive. Um, last I talked to um, Justine this afternoon, um, she uh, was uh, going to get her COVID test, so we need to keep Justine Anton's family in our prayers. Um, we are continuing to keep a friend of mine, Rob Button, in our prayers, who is, uh, who is in Northwest Arkansas. Uh, we continue to keep Kathy Griffin in our prayers, um, Susie in our prayers, um, Sydney, Car Miss Carol, and Emil Brown in our prayers. Uh, we continue to keep um, Brad Von Tunglin in our prayers. Uh, also, Dominic Munn went to the doctor this week, and they are um, waiting for news from that visit. So we will continue to keep Dominic in our prayers. And um, I was able to speak with uh, Nevada Mills uh, this week for a moment. Um, he has been cleared to return to work. Uh, he said that he still gets... Um, he gets tired a little easily, uh, is what he was saying to us. So um, hopefully soon he will um, he will recover fully from his um, deal with uh, COVID as well. Um, um, we do have a um, joy this week. Um, Lathan Aaron was named uh, the Grant County Farm Bureau Insurance Player of the Week. Um, for his um, his uh, football play um, this past week or so ago. Um, we also want to um, keep um, um, Brandy Castleberry in our prayers. Uh, Brandy um, is known to several of us here in Central. Um, she worked uh, for um, Jane uh, and... Um, Mr. Judkins over at, uh, at Keepsakes, excuse me. Um, and she is having, um, she's having her second chemo treatment for, uh, she had her second chemo treatment for lymph lymphoma this week. And uh, Ms. Judkins also asked us to keep uh, her roommate from college, Judy Jacobs, in our prayers. Uh, she has pneumonia after having a breast cancer treatment. Um, so we will continue to keep those people in our prayers as well. Um, and uh, as always, I ask that you uh, keep our, uh, those who are dealing with um, the illness of COVID-19 in our prayers, uh, those who are, um, who have lost loved ones, um, over 200,000 in the U.S. now, uh, in our prayers, uh, we ask that you keep um, those who are medical professionals who are dealing with uh, 
dealing with the pandemic in your prayers and also uh, those who are um, retail workers, uh, law enforcement, uh, those who are, who are the greatest at risk. Uh, keep those people in your prayers as well. Um, we will continue to keep our country in our uh, prayers. Um, I know that there are um, mixed feelings about um, among people who uh, about uh, Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg who passed this past Friday. Uh, but I think we can all agree that we uh, we will pray for her family in dealing with the loss of, of their loved one. Um, but And we will also continue to pray for our nation and our leaders, and we pray that they make <clears throat> good decisions in the coming days and weeks. Um, and we ask uh, the Lord for uh, reconciliation uh, amongst the peoples of our nation and our world. Uh, let us pray. Holy and gracious Father, we give you thanks that the Lord Jesus Christ is in fact today, the same today as he was yesterday and will be for all of our tomorrows. We ask that you keep uh, Brandy Castleberry, Dominic Munn, Judy Jacobs, uh, my unspoken prayer request, um, uh, the Nevada Mills family, uh, the Rob Button family, um, the um, uh, Sydney Hayes, Carol Brown, Emil Brown, uh, Brad Von Tunglin, uh, Susie Von Tunglin, and Dominic Munn in your caring. Uh, we pray that those who, um, those doctors are able to uh, gain wisdom from you, that they may heal those uh, sick people, and uh, that you will um, grant um, a grant peace to those who have lost loved ones uh, recently, um, specifically those uh, family members of Justice Ginsburg, uh, those who are um, who lost loved ones due to the COVID-19 pandemic. And we ask for a speedy recovery for all those who were mentioned with medical issues and those who are also dealing with uh, COVID-19. We ask for the protection of those who are um, who are uh, dealing on the front lines of the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, we pray for the reconciliation of our nation and our world with you and with each other. And we ask that our leaders make sound and just decisions in the coming days and weeks. Give us hope as we strive to be faithful disciples of Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray together saying, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine, uh, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now go out into the world in peace to love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power and presence of God's Holy Spirit, taking today's message with you, and may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forevermore. Amen.